Hi there, we're so delighted to introduce to you our free church app. Uh, this app is loaded with features and resources that will greatly enrich your life. So head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore and download the app right now. It's going to greatly enrich your journey with God. Words. It's a combination of choices and collective voices. For me, it started as a little kid with the first word uttered, Mama. My words began to take shape. I grew, my words grew, my words grew. Chit chat, lines, lyrics, tweets. Aw, that's so sweet. Words began to make me, my world of words began to break me. Sisters, parents, exes, spouse kept assuring me. That's pointless, that's useless, that's hopeless. I'm worthless. The boss says it best. It's not personal, it's just business. But that's not true. Not true. Worthless? I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am a royal diadem in his hand. I am precious in his sight. For he knows the plans he has for me. Plans to perfect me. Words. It's a combination of choices and collective voices. It has the power of life and death. Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Living Strong. As always, it's a joy and delight to come your way and bring God's word to you and spend some time in prayer. We've been... Uh, spending some time just talking and searching the Word of God uh, concerning the use of our words, um, the power of the words we speak, and, and the instructions God has given to us on how we should use our words rightly, correctly. On the program today, I want to bring our attention to a very important truth that we see in the Word of God, which uh, is explained for us in the New Testament, but actually, it's something that God uh, spoke to His people about in the Old Testament. So we're going to go start off with uh, a passage in the New Testament, and then we're going to go back into the Old Testament to look at where this truth was uh, first taught to the people of God. In Romans, the 10th chapter, verses 6 through 10, the Apostle Paul writes this. He says, But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above? Or, who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead? But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now Paul is talking to the New Testament believer. He's talking to us, those of us who have received righteousness through faith. And so he begins in verse 6, he says, The righteousness of faith, we people who receive righteousness by faith, it's, he's talking about us, this is how we speak, or he says, faith, it speaks in this manner. And then he begins to say, this is how we do not speak, but this is how we do speak. This is how we do not speak. We do not say, you know, who's going to go up into heaven to bring Jesus from there? Or who's going to go down into hell to bring Jesus up from, hell, up from the grave? That's not how we speak. We do not speak as though God is so far away from us. There's nobody to help us. As though God is dead, that He is powerless to help us. We don't speak that way. We don't speak hopelessness. We don't speak despair. We don't speak, you know, negative. We don't speak failure. We don't speak that way. 
But how are we supposed to speak? And then he, he tells us, he says, the word is near you. So if you and I want God to help us, we don't say, you know, God is so far away. How is he going to help me? Who's, who's going to bring him down from heaven? We don't say, oh no, God is dead. How is he going to help us? We don't speak that way. He says, but instead of that, this is how we speak. We, the, the word is near you. The word is in your heart and in your mouth. That is the word of faith which we are preaching. That means the, the things that God, Paul has been talking to the people, writing to us, and the things that have been revealed to us in Scripture, the word is near us. And that is the word that we are supposed to speak. And then he goes on to tell us in verses 9 and 10, he says, since the word is near you, here's what you do. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. We are preaching the gospel to you. We are preaching about Jesus to you. So now you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ and you believe in your heart that God is raised him from the dead and you will be saved. You will experience salvation. So if you want to experience salvation in your life, in your circumstance, uh, he says, you know, don't speak hopelessness. Don't speak despair. Don't say, you know, God is so far away. How is he going to save me? Or oh, God is dead. How is uh, he's powerless to save me? You know, don't speak like that. The word is in your heart and it's in your mouth. It's in your heart and with your heart you believe. It's in your mouth and with the mouth confession is made. That means you say the word. So he says, now if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, he says, you will be saved. You will experience salvation. You believe Jesus for who he is in your heart. You declare who he is with your mouth and you will experience him as your savior as the one who saves you. So this is how God becomes near to us. How? When we believe his word and when we confess his word, then we experience him right here with us. We don't have to say, you know, God is so far away or our God is dead. We don't speak like that. But just by believing his word, his word is in two places. It's in our heart. It's in our mouth. It's in our heart for us to believe it. It's in our mouth for us to say it, confess it. And when we believe his word and when we say it, we experience him at work right there in our lives, in our circumstances, in our situation. Now, that's what Paul is bringing to our attention. He says, look, I'm giving you the word of faith. I'm telling you the message that brings faith in your heart. Now, you believe that in your heart. You say it with your mouth and you will experience the saving, the healing, the delivering. Uh, the, the victory that Jesus brings into your life. Now, in giving us this passage, Paul is actually quoting from the Old Testament. So when we go back into the book of Deuteronomy, the Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, verses 11 uh, through 15 and also verse 19, over there, God is speaking to his people through Moses and he gives them the same instruction. He says, for this commandment which I command you today is not too mysterious for you, nor is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will ascend into heaven for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it? Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that you may do it. So Moses is telling his people, God's people, see, the word is very near you. It's in your heart and it's in your mouth. It's, it's in your heart, it's in your mouth. God's word is, to, is meant to be kept in two places. It's to be in our hearts, it's in our mouths. In our heart for us to believe it, in our mouth for us to say it. And when we believe it, when we say it, we will also be doing it. We will also live according to it. And then he says in verse 6, 15, See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. So here's the distinction. He says, you have the choice. You can either have life and good or you can experience death and evil. What do you want? Do you want to experience life and good or do you want to just experience death and evil? And then he, I'm skipping a few verses and in verse 19 he says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you. I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life both you and your descendants may live. So God is saying, look, the option isn't before you. You have to make the choice. You have the choice of life and blessing, or you have the choice of death, cursing, and evil. But God is saying, I'm telling you, choose life. 
I'm telling you, choose what brings goodness and brings blessing in your life. But how is that? How can you choose that? How can you uh, determine that you're going to take the path of life, blessing, and goodness? He says, the word is near you. It's in your heart. It's in your mouth that you may believe it, say it, and do it. If you believe my word, if you say my word, you do my word, then you're choosing life, blessing, and goodness for yourself. You see the connection there, that if you and I keep God's word in our hearts, in our mouths, and make it part of our life, we will choose life, blessing, and goodness for ourselves. And that's from where, that's the, the, the Old Testament passage that Paul is quoting for us in the New. And he's saying, look, that's the same principle that's at work in the New Testament. For us believers, for us who have received righteousness by faith, that same thing applies. God wants us, people, in the New Covenant, to do the same thing he taught us people under the Old Covenant. Keep his word in your heart. Keep his word in your mouth. You believe with your heart. You say with your mouth. And you will experience life, goodness, blessing. You will experience Jesus Christ as your Savior, your healer, your deliverer, the one who uh, intervenes in your circumstances and, and, and he turns things around. You will experience all that Jesus is. God is with you in your situation, in your circumstance, by you and me just doing the simple thing of keeping his word in our heart and in our mouth. Now, that whole thing of, of saying his word is what we call as confession. Now, in the, in many times when you use the word confession, uh, people think about, you know, confessing sin, confessing the wrong you've done. Well, that's only one part of it. The New Testament uses the word confession more for us to agree with God. The word confession is, is, it comes from the Greek word homologia, which means, which has two parts it, homo, which means the same thing. Logia means the word that is spoken. So you speak the same thing. You say the same thing as what? As God's word, because that's the word that's in your heart and it's in your mouth. So you confess the same thing. You say the same thing as the word of God. Now, we must understand this whole uh, truth concerning confession of saying the word of God. It's very important. So let's build that up further as, as from what we see in scripture concerning confession. In Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 and 33, Jesus says, Whoever confesses me before men, him will I confess, also confess, before my Father who is in heaven. Whoever denies me before men, him will I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Now notice how Jesus is responding. If we, according to what we say, is what he can represent before the Father in heaven. If we confess him, if we acknowledge him, if we say who he is to us, that's what he's going to represent before the Father uh, 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 in accordance to what we confess. In Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 1, it says, Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. So the Lord Jesus is the high priest of our confession of the faith we profess, of the faith we speak, of what we declare here on earth. He is the high priest of our confession. That means he's representing what we are saying here on earth before the Father in heaven. And that's what he told us in Matthew 10. If we confess him, that's exactly what he will acknowledge before the Father in heaven. So Jesus is the high priest of our confession. He can only represent what we are saying before the throne, before the Father in heaven. When we are in agreement with his word, when we say who he is to us, then that's the only thing he can represent before the Father. He cannot represent what is negative, what, is, uh, what we speak against his word. He will not represent that. But when we speak in harmony with his word, and we speak in a line to the covenant that we have, then he is a high priest of our confession. The book of Hebrews really is bringing, up, uh, bringing out the truth about covenant. Covenant is like having a, a, a written contract, a written agreement with God. Now, when you want to uh, claim the benefits of your covenant, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to state that this is what the covenant, covenant says. 
And these are the blessings I want to receive, therefore. So we have to state the covenant if you want to receive the blessings of that covenant. And Jesus is the high priest of that covenant. That means he can only represent when we confess, when we speak in agreement with his word, when we speak in agreement with that covenant, the Lord Jesus can represent only that before the Father. So let's look at a few more passages from the book of Hebrews that connects our confession with our covenant. In Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verses 14 through 16, uh, the writer of Hebrews says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So he's saying, look, we have a great high priest. We have access to the very throne of God where we can receive mercy and grace to help us in our time of need. And, uh, and uh, our high priest understands us when we are going through uh, our weaknesses and our struggles. So all of that is there. It's all part of our covenant. But in view that we have such a great high priest before the very throne of God, what must we do? Let us hold fast our confession. That means what I am saying in agreement with the covenant that I have with God, what I am saying in agreement with the word, His word, which is in my heart and which is in my mouth, hold fast to your confession. That means don't change what your words, what you're saying. Always speak in alignment to the word of God. Always speak in alignment to the covenant that you have with God. Don't let your weaknesses, don't let your struggles, don't let your times of need, don't let your times of adversity, don't let your times of challenges, don't let your times of walking through the valleys, don't let your times of facing the mountains, nothing. Don't let anything change your confession. Confession means I am speaking in agreement with the word of God and with the covenant that I have with God. And the reason he says we must hold fast our confession is because we've got a great high priest who is right up there before the very throne of God. A similar truth is brought up there in the 10th chapter in Hebrews 10, verses 19 to 23. The writer of Hebrews says, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us to the way that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Once again, a very similar picture to Hebrews chapter 4. He says, look, we have access to the most holy place. We have access to the holiest holy, through the blood of Jesus. Jesus opened, us, opened up for us a way in the very presence of God, to the very throne of God. So let's come before God with a pure heart, having, uh, uh, get rid, getting rid of an evil conscience, with a full assurance of faith, and holding tightly, holding fast to the confession of our hope or the confession of our faith. Because we know the one who promised us. We know that the one who made this covenant with us. We know that the one who gave the word to us. He is faithful. There is absolute faithfulness on his part to the covenant and to his word. So what must we do? We must hold fast our confession. See, when we make our confession, when we say, yeah, when we speak in agreement with God's word, when we speak in agreement with our covenant with God, this confession is in the, represented in the very presence of God. Jesus is the high priest of that. He's standing before the Father representing that confession. So, it's so important for you and me to learn to confess the word. Learn to speak in agreement with the word of God, with the covenant of God. In any situation, about yourself, about your health, about your well-being, about your finances, about your family, about your marriage, about your children, about your future, about everything in life, confess the word. That means you speak always in agreement with the word of God and with the covenant that you have with God. Say what God has said. What has God said about you? He said that he will make you the head, not the tail. 
He said he will bless you when you come in, when you go out. He said he will bless all the work of your hands. He said that he will supply for all of your need according to his riches and glory. He, he has given his covenant, his word to us concerning every area of our lives. And all he's saying is keep my word in your heart, in your mouth. That word, if you confess that word, that is you, Jesus is the high priest of that confession. He's standing before that. Uh, in, in before the Father, before you, on behalf of your confession. And one more truth, one more uh, important insight here on why we must say the word is found for us in Ephesians 6 and verse 17, where Paul writes to us about our armor. And he says, I want you to take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. He says, now you believer, in your battle against the enemy, you take the word of God. That's the sword of the Spirit, meaning this is a, something that the Holy Spirit is going to use, but you've got to pick it up. You've got to take the word. Now, how do you use that word? By you speaking the word. Words are meant to be spoken. So when you speak the word, when you confess the word, when you say what the word says, the Holy Spirit uses that against the enemy because it's the sword of the Spirit. When you are confessing the word, the Spirit of God is moving on your behalf. See how powerful it is for you and me to confess the word. That's why God says, keep my word in your heart and in your mouth. With a heart, you believe my word. With a mouth, you confess my word. You say, you speak in agreement with what I have spoken. Is what God is teaching us in the scriptures. How do you know the Holy Spirit is there? He says, when you all come together, each of you, you're coming with something. You've come with a song, with a psalm, with a tongue, with an interpretation, with a revelation, with a teaching. They're coming with those gifts ready to pour out to one another. When you come to church, you're saying, God, use me today to speak a word to somebody who needs it. Use me today to maybe share something I've learned with somebody. They come like that. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. We'll be spend some time talking about confession, that is agreeing with God in what we speak in and how we speak. And I trust that you will make the choice, that you will choose to confess the word. That means you will choose to say what God has said concerning every area of your life in every situation. Stay with it, hold fast to your confession. Let's pray together. Father, I just pray and ask that you will show us, God, where we need to align our speaking to your word, to confess the word, to say what you've spoken concerning us. And knowing God that we have a great high priest in heaven who's standing before the throne on behalf of our confession. And that when we speak the word, the spirit of God moves uh, uh, through that word against the enemy, against situations and circumstances. Help us, Lord, to learn how to speak aligned to your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. We invite you to visit our church website, apcwo.org, where we have several free resources like MP3 sermons, sermon notes, and publications that you can download and use. You can also call or email us to request a free copy of our publications. And please feel free to share your feedback and do share your prayer requests when you contact us.